Well guys, <laughs> another delve into diagnosing the 7.3. So we had this little bucket truck has been in here a few times, a little 450. Um, if y'all ever want to have some fun, side note, just mount a clutch driven P a hydraulic pump to the center of a dual alternator setup. So here's what we got. Um, truck is running with zero power. It's not smoking. It just, it just, it has no power. So, um, we pushed it up here in the shop and we checked the usual stuff. We checked the uh, H-pop reservoir was full. Uh, we put our fuel gauge on there. We got, I'd like to see a little more fuel pressure, but it's where it was when we changed the fuel pump on this truck a little while back. So I think we're good. Uh, another technician, I use that word lightly, suggested IDM just because he saw the P1316 code, which is more, more often wiring than IDM. But just for shits and giggles, we swapped the IDM and same problem. So as we were running through all the usual suspects, uh, you know, transmission fluid to make sure it wasn't a transmission and that it was the motor, uh it led us to pulling the valve cover off if i miss anything let me know um just to kind of see what was going on we did a buzz test and number two was failing is failing audibly and is failing the test by kicking up uh codes you know test fail codes so we ran it with the valve covers off and we're not getting very much oil coming out of any of the discharge chutes on the tops of the injectors. Number two doesn't put out anything. Uh, number four, if you leave the chute off, when you first crank the truck up, she sounds normal and within two seconds goes to running like crap. And so four, when we took the spout off, as you can see, it little speckles everywhere. It peed all over everything. So for the first two seconds that it runs, it's um it's put it's number four is putting out oil but then was immediately when it, it after two seconds of running time and it starts to sound running like it's running rough again number four is not spitting out all so we got a couple of codes um uh, let me get over here we weren't really going to shoot this as a video because we thought it was not going to be that complicated but go figure so we got a P1105 dual alternator upper fault malfunction. We hadn't looked into that yet. Um, P1211, which is, you know, the ICP pressure above or below desired. Uh, and just FYI, the equal signs under here is what the Ford book says would be the fix for it, uh, or the probable cause rather so the alternator thing is either going to be a circuit failure alternator failure or pcm uh on the p1211 the icp is um above or below desired the ipr valve fails uh or is stuck or um or shorted to ground <coughs> Uh, the 1247 turbo boost code, I think we cleared it. It hadn't come back. I think it was just from them driving it with it running so poorly. Y'all excuse my uh, hopping around with the camera. 1280 is um, injector control panel circuit out of range, which is usually open or grounded circuit or bad sensor or PCM. 1316 is just the the IDM ain't happy code. Um, uh, da -da 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 -da. And over here, we got a 1280, which is ICP failure. Uh, it aborted, a, uh, the ICP reading was not getting good enough to get a, um, a cylinder contribution test. So also, we thought we were on to something. This is why we didn't film um the icp was the first thing we did 
put a brand new ICP and a brand new pigtail. And you can see it hiding down in there. Um, so we had a wet pigtail uh, in the plug full of oil. And um, the uh, weather tight boot was all swollen, so it had been getting oily for a while. So we put a new pigtail, new ICP on there because we had three codes all saying ICP this, ICP that. So we had a new one just to test it. That's not the problem. So fuel pressure is not the problem. The IDM is not the problem. Uh, we're back to what usually is the problem and why I don't have any hair anymore, which is wiring. So we're getting ready to set y'all up and I'm gonna go through my IDM testing procedure on the IDM plug down here in the end fender. And that is gonna test hot to ground from the IDM plug through the 42 pin plug, through the engine harness to the nine pin plug, through the under the valve cover harness to the injector and back all the way here. So we got a few off readings but nothing way off starting at the 42 pin and working our way to the under the valve cover harness now we're just you know trying to trying to find something that, that shows us a red flag so we're going to set up the camera and everything and we'll get uh, to testing the harness there now keep in mind because i had this several questions pop up last time i did this idm test it is not 100% foolproof because you can have frayed wires that only have one or two little strand hair wires holding on and they can handle the fractions of a volt that the ohm meter is sending through but they can't handle the 120 volts DC that the IDM is sending through meaning they still have minuscule continuity but they have no ability to carry a load so it still falls back a lot of times to once we do this test if we don't find anything there it's going to be unlooming some wires and just visually testing stuff and that's where i usually find things um it's surprising but it is what it is so don't depend on these ohm tests as for certain that everything is fine with the wiring you can have continuity but you don't have enough wire there if it's all frayed to transmit the full signal and if you don't get the full signal you don't get the full service so we'll set you up and get going from there you'll film me chat mm -hmm. <laughs> all right guys so this is the old pin test connector testing uh, idm connector thing i can't speak today so test one, all right, we're going to be ohming the injectors. They should be, the spec is between 2.8 and 3.6 ohms to be good. Um, going from the ground for the bank, which is going to be the center pin if you're on a 9 pin or the common. Um, so anyway, we're going from the ground on the bank. I'll show you on the plugs. Uh, you're testing it as res to the respective cylinders. So here we go. I got it colored in green for left bank, yellow for right bank, okay? What y'all might want to do, I'll get my hand out the way, y'all might want to snapshot this with your phone and keep this. We'll come back to test two, but test two is just checking the powers and the grounds and the shielding wires to make sure they're not grounded out. But we know we're getting an issue with cylinder two, so one of our main focuses is going to be on that. All right, so we're gonna go to the, this is the IDM pinout. Okay, now, if you look at this top row, uh, you see the little typed numbers, all right? That's starting here, that's one to 14, all the way up 27 to 40. Now, the top row has no females in it, so I don't know if the camera will show but if you look in here, you can see copper, copper females in the bottom row and the mid row. Top row is empty, so that's how this is orientated. So this is the top and that's the top. Now, we're gonna be, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let hold, get, get a shot of that if they hadn't had it. 
Y'all take a snapshot of this because we're going to basically be going back to the other, back and forth to the other uh, page to pin test this thing. Maybe I'll split it in two. All right, guys. All right. Uh, we're coming here. We are here today to celebrate the blowing up of the Ford 7 tree. Uh, we're going for the big mushroom cloud. Y'all hang on. I uh, come so. <laughs> beep, beep. We are not, we don't play together well at all. Okay, cats, pin 23 in the green is your common for the whole left bank. That's going to be the center pin on the nine pin if you're fooling with that, but that's the common. And then these pins are the switchable grounds adjacent to that on the nine pin. So we'll go into that later if we need to, but right here, you can look, I don't know if this is gonna come out on camera, but the common, and we're gonna check all the greens. So the common, the common right here is 23, fuel injectors left side feed, okay? So that's gonna be right here. So you can come to the center and count backwards, or you can use whatever landmark you wanna use. So feel free to stop and snapshot whatever you want. So we're gonna come down, I'm gonna come down off the center. It's gonna be one, two, and three. So two, these two, second and third from center. So let's look down here. One, that's two, and this is three. All right, and we're getting, I'm gonna redo it a couple of times. Okay, so we're gonna call that 4.7. All right, Tristan's gonna write that down right here. And we're supposed to be 2.8 to 3.6 to be in spec. So that can be, that's in Chinese. Look like 9.7. You Puerto Ricans, give me the pen. Hey man. <laughs> man, that's a foe, F-O. Okay, now we're gonna stay with this common pin 23. I'm gonna stay on that with the black one. And we're gonna go to just, we're just gonna back up on the page. Pin 19, which is fuel injector number six. Pin 19 is two pins to the right of the center bolt, which would be right here. So we're getting 4.3. So if you can write that down in English this time, 4.3, <laughs> right here. Up, oh, no, hang on, wait a minute. That's 19, so that's right here. That's cylinder six. All right, now we're gonna go up here to pin number nine, which is cylinder eight. Okay, and we're staying with pin 23, and pin number nine is gonna be on the bottom row, two clicks over from the center. Okay, hmm. 9.2. Okay, write that down for uh, pin number nine. Okay, and I'm gonna go up three with the red probe. One, two, three. All right, so. Three point eight. Okay, so that is pin number seven, cylinder four. Okay, so we're just keeping track of this. Now, so far, this is the only one that was within spec. Okay, so we're gonna check these again closer to the injectors, and we're gonna find our problem. We already looking a little weird here. I still don't understand why we not getting anything weird here but that's another thing okay so that's the that's the left bank we're going to come over here to pin 24 which is one two three four from the center one two three four all right i'm going to keep that probe there all right we're going to do pin six which is fuel injector one and pin six is bottom row one, two, three, four, five. So it'd be hole number. Nope, that's hole number one. Two, three, four, five, six. All right, so two. All right, 
we're getting a 3.7 on cylinder, pin 6 cylinder 1. Alright. Okay, and we're going to go to the next pin, which will be 21. Alright, 21 is going to be 1 to the left in the center. 4.9 is going to be pin 21. Okay, and we're going to go to pin number 8. Alright, pin number 8 is going to be the first one on the pass center. 3.2. You can give your own meter a couple of seconds to settle down. Sometimes they don't want to, uh, they don't want to, they'll, they'll start walking down on you. So pin 20 should be right here. And that's a 3.4. Okay, so what this is telling us is pin uh, cylinder 2, 6, 8, 3, so we got four cylinders that are out of spec high, four cylinders that are in spec. Okay, now before we get off of this particular plug in right here, we're going to do the ground circuit test. So we want to go, we have a common ground which is a black pink. And where is the other one? That's 23, 24, 18. Alright, and then we have a shield. So that's what we're going to be testing to see if there's any problems there. So we're going to go back to pin 23. Double check that you're on the right one. And we're going to go to pin 26, which would be the last one in this room. Okay, now you want to have open circuit. Now you can look at the ohm meter. Nothing changes. It doesn't go to zero and it doesn't beep. So that's good. We have no continuity there and we don't want any continuity there. Okay, I'm going to stay on pin 26 and I'm going to go to pin 24. Okay, same thing. Open circuit. We're good. All right, and then we're going to do, let's see, what do we did? We did 23 to 26, 24, 26. We're going to 23 to 18. So one two three okay so we're not getting anything to 18 and we're gonna go 24 to 18 one two three four one two three four all right so our ground side is all open circuit we have no continuity there so our ground wires are good if we have an issue it's going to be in the injector wires themselves um in an adjacent uh, well on here you can see if you're tracing one particular wire it's going to show you the colors of it so it'll, t it'll show you the pin placement which is right here the location of where it, that's the pin placement on the plug it's going to show you the colors of it you know this is gy is gray slash red so that would be a gray wire with a red stripe this would be gray slash white gray gray wire with a white uh, brown slash light blue so it'd be a brown wire with a light blue so the first color um, tn what is tn tan. tan so tan is by itself so it's just going to be a tan wire light blue is by itself so it's going to be light blue so if you have a slash the second color is going to be a stripe on the wire so that can help you out in these uh in all of these so let me get set up where we can do a little second go round at uh, narrowing this down a little bit. Earlier today. Okay. All right, we did this earlier today. This is the 42 pin plug. Again, you can look at the orientation. This is the side on the engine. This is the side coming from the fender well. So you got holes here. The little X's mean these are the stud pins and these are the females. So Again, I have these marked. They have the color codes, but they do not have what it is. On the previous one, it said what it is. So you can back up and see, you know, what number six is. You know, the, the, blue, the blue or brown light blue, the tan black, 
the light green orange and so basically what we're doing here is we're going from a loop from the IDM all the way through the harness through the injectors and back to the uh, adjacent pin here hot to ground then we go to the 42 pin plug which you'll get just gonna get a shot of for y'all that don't know what the part 42 is it's hanging on a bungee point to it for them so they can see all right so what we did is we opened it up we laid this side down we had our test points here and we tested them out uh, what was it it was uh well, we were testing for, for one particular thing from a bad buzz test. But anyhow, you can compare the wire colors to the explanation on the previous diagram. So, white is going to be fuel injector control for number two. Pink yellow is going to be the common for all the injectors on the left bank, which is a driver's side bank. So you can, you know, these, the lack of information here, you can pull from here. And basically, we're just doing the same test. This is going toward the engine. So, you know, you do, um, what was it? It was 22. What did we do? There was 23 and 24 on this side. Yeah, but I'm looking. All right, so white is going to be white is going to be pin three, and the common is pink yellow. Pink yellow is going to be pin 11. So to test number two, you're going to go from three to 11. Mm. All right, and yeah. so forth. You can figure it out. I'm not going to go through all of it, but you can do the the translating of the cut wire colors from the previous test we just did. So like for testing injector number two, 11 is the common, three is the is the um, actual injector control. So when we do that test, we're going from the 42 pin through the injector harness on the engine this time, which we're going through the engine the last time, but we were going through the IDM harness as well. So now we're trying to narrow it down. We go in, do the engine harness version, and if we still don't find our short, we'll go in all the way to the nine pin, right on the, on the valve, uh, under the valve cover harness, and we'll pin test them there the same way. So, uh, if you need that information, hit me up in the comments because I don't have it pulled out right now. That that I can do in my head. The rest of these I got to always do a printout and pull it up for y'all. So if you get a if you get a hot like we got a nine point something on, so something's going on with that particular what number was it? It was cylinder eight. So. If we were testing this one, we got from the IDM, we got very high ohms on cylinder eight. If we come here and we still have very high ohms on cylinder eight, then our problem is in front of us. If we got here and cylinder eight read normal, then our problem would be behind us. So all you're doing is narrowing down where you can where you need to be looking. So as long as your problem of, of high ohmage or out of spec uh stuff is going as you're working toward the engine when it disappears it's right behind you you got to check the previous section of wiring so anyhow that'll get you going on this idm thing now again realize that broken wires are going to come up as open circuits which means that it didn't move at all and the ohm meter is not a hundred percent uh positive as far as testing for whether or not you're gonna have it. And the reason is, like I said before, you can have one little wire. This is one, this is welding wire, so it's quite a bit bigger than your, uh, you know, the individual strands in here. But you can have one little strand that will hold continuity, but it won't take the 110 volts going through it. So you'll get continuity that says the wire is good, you try and send power through it, nothing. 
So we're going to keep narrowing this down and come back to y'all in just a minute. All right, guys, we're starting another day on this bucket truck. Um, you hear some heavy breathing in the background. This is Miss Ruby. Miss Ruby's my supervisor for today and in charge, director of heavy breathing. So she'll be putting a soundtrack in the back of the <laughs> in the back of the audio with all that breathing. So let me catch y'all up. I just wanted to kind of re retrace my steps. I don't want to be too repetitive, but this is a head scratcher and uh we didn't film it because we just kind of forgot got started in it and um realized it was going to be a little bit more complicated than we were expecting truck wouldn't pull itself down the road worth a damn they limped it over here from about 30 miles away parked it uh even right here in the gravel parking area it didn't have enough uh power to back up into the stall or to move so total lack of power um we started going through the usual suspects we pulled some codes got some icp codes um I, we already went through the codes with you earlier in the video um icp I, idm uh this and that so we got into it with the icp first um, i'm gonna show you all right in there so we changed it we pulled the icp plug to run it without the icp of course like our tests usually do and <clears throat> that didn't make any difference in the running it also noticed that we had oil in the plug which is the diaphragm and the icp going bad so uh we went ahead and put a pigtail and an icp in there again made no change in running so we checked our h pop res reservoir and if y'all are wondering why this looks funny up here it's a, a electronic clutch like an ac clutch running a hydraulic pump for the boom in the back but it does sit right over all the h-pop stuff but you can still get to it h-pop reservoir was being was full didn't see any uh h-pop starving issues but again running and cackling so we were trying to figure it out we pulled the valve covers um we saw some uh, injectors not spitting oil. Um, one cat had pulled a, a scan on it and we ended up doing the IDM test again. Um, and all the way through to swapping out another IDM that we had a spare of for testing. And that didn't do any good. So um, the one thing that it is doing is it cranks up initially fine and two to three seconds into running it starts bucking and carrying on and i'm wondering if it's a sticky ipr this morning but we also do have number two failing the buzz test audibly and uh you know throwing a code after the buzz test we took the uh, discharge shoots off of um number two and number four and we noticed number two is not spitting oil at all number four however spit oil all the way past ruby over there uh you, you can see the sawdust laying on the ground but um but it only did that for the first two seconds of runtime so when you crank it up and it's running two or three seconds normal that second that number four uh injector was discharging oil not getting the shoots off so it'll it'll spread a pretty good bit um got it all over the fender and everything too and we kind of wiped up what was going on under the hood we hadn't gotten to the fender yet but you can see specks all over the fender so it shot oil clear to about here so uh we're getting all pressure there but it's falling off and number four two or three seconds in stops stop shooting oil so we're getting some kind of h pop oil thing going on and number two so I, you know again i think one of the harder things on these trucks is chasing two or three items at the same time when you get them and they've got a lot of age on them you've got wear and tear you've got mechanical jackassery that's going on um it's kind of hard to you know you you open a can of worms sometimes 
so anyway uh we did ohm testing which y'all saw earlier i'm not gonna go through that we threw the valve cover on because we were getting some rain last night we didn't want to get anything in the truck so i'm gonna play around with the ipr today uh, it doesn't look like it on the scanner. I'm not seeing crazy numbers in, in indicative of the IPR or sticky or anything like that. But we're going to possibly swap a coil. Maybe if I have a test IPR, we'll swap the whole thing. Um, a lot of times you can accomplish a lot with just swapping the coils. And that's very fast and easy to do. So, um, anyhow... That's what we're going to get into this morning and see if we can narrow down why we're not getting why we're losing this h pop thing uh might lead into pressure testing the h pop i don't know where this is going just yet so i'm going to quit repeating myself now get y'all got y'all caught up on where we are let's get into it okay guys i did find a couple of things uh wrong with this old girl I uh, took our valve cover back off and got our spouts on so we don't make a mess. This is the IPR, and right where my finger is, you can see a naked spot. And what kind of looks like the beginnings of a naked spot next to it, like a crack in the insulation. So that, to me, warrants a new pigtail. We don't have the uh, insul little accordion weather, sh weather rubber right here. So that'll come with a new pigtail. If you look down in the hole, you'll see my yellow and black wires at the end of my blue connector. So what I did is, I took a, there's a very similar plug to the IPR plug used on the, uh, under the valve cover harness to plug into the injectors. So I had an old harness, I cut one off and I spliced it onto these red and black wires to make an extension out of it. So that's plugged into the IPR. Now, uh, just so some of you may not know this, the IPR is just a nozzle. Your H-pop should be pumping 100% all the time when the truck is running. So the IPR is spring-loaded to we'll call it zero op uh, zero pinched off or, or zero would be wide open it's spring loaded to be wide open which means you'll have flow but you won't have pressure so if you're if your ipr is not getting any signal from the computer it's spring loaded to full open and you may see two three hundred pounds of uh h-pop pressure or icp pressure from the h-pop running but what we need is for the IPR to electronically, with, an, with the coil that's on it, it's an electromagnet. So the electromagnet is going to uh, actuate and move that spring-loaded plunger to close off and generate pressure. So that uh, is indicated by the duty cycle percentage on the scan tool. I'll show you all that in a minute. So what I'm doing here is I'm wondering why we are, you know, not getting oil in the, you know, we're not seeing oil spitting out of the, uh, the cylinders and all that. So we made a jumper wire. I've got the hot right here. I'm going to put the negative on. You can see it's got a little juice because it's activating that electromagnet. Now that should, we should see 3,700 on the, uh, on the top number right here which is injector control pressure and of course this is resting right now it you know 9 12 is about with 9 to 12 pound uh, percent is where you're going to see the injector con uh, pressure regulator duty cycle it's probably going to go down to four because it's going to be trying to get that pressure down because it's not liking to run with that higher pressure but i'm going to crank her up and we're going to watch that uh injector control pressure number at the top now this didn't move and this isn't moving so that is what's bugging me because 
earlier when I did it, I was seeing 36 to 3700 PSI. I'm gonna unhook this, you don't wanna leave that running. Um, so we're gonna unhook the hot and the negative on here. So I've done that same test a few times. What's happened is I'll usually get like 3700 and then the next time I crank it, it'll be like 750. And then the next time I crank it, it'll, you know, just kind of letting it run a few seconds and shut it off and recrank it. It might be, you know, 14 to 1700, somewhere in there. But what's got me is the IPR should not be doing anything but giving me a full, full closed nozzle effect every time with uh because we don't have any the computer has no communications with it right now the computer is not even plugged into it all we all it knows is it's getting a full 12 volts i'm gonna hook this up again all right again you don't want to run it for long on there but uh now let's see let me go cycle the key see if our data comes alive all right, so again, we're going to see what that top number looks like. So that's wide open, 37, 3,800. And it's doing 4.7%. 4, 4 so it's trying to close to bring that number down. Now, that's max. That's what it's doing. It's doing what it's supposed to. And the truck died, so I'm going to cycle the key, and we're going to try it one more time. See that pressure's bleeding down? All right. And you see how we're at 7-something? We shouldn't be at 725, because we're telling it to give me full power, full pressure. So we should be seeing more than that. I'm gonna turn that off. So we're seeing 725 when we still have that jumper hooked up, which means that the IPR is fully, fully closed and pinched off to the most pressure. And we should be seeing 3700, but it's dropping off. So either we have something going on. I doubt we have something going on with the H pop because it's either generating pressure or it's not. The pressure is uh, coming down not astronomically fast, so I don't, I, I don't think we have a leak. But um, I think the coil or the um, IPR is sticky. So we're going to get a new IPR, try that out, mainly because it's one of the usual suspects. And the coil and the IPR look like they haven't been changed in quite some time. And the pigtail. So we're going to get all that done and... Um, once we get the new pigtail on, we're going to try it again and see what we can come up with. So that's pretty much how the H-Pop and the IPR work together. And again, you know, this little jumper, if you're thinking that you're out of, um, you know, you're not communicating, you're not, the computer can't uh, make the adjustments to the IPR. And especially if you can't get enough, you're seeing two, three hundred pounds on the um, ICP pressure and it won't pop off, you can come try this little trick, make a jumper and send 12 volts and that'll kind of help you nail down what's going on with it. So, all right, I'll get you some more on that later. I'm kind of, if I'm not making a whole lot of sense right now, guys, it's because this one's got me scratching my head a good bit. So I got a couple of pigtails to change while I'm waiting on the IPR to get here and, uh, I'll work on that and get back to y'all in a little bit. Alright guys, I hate to keep showing y'all the same shot of this engine, but I guess uh, uh, it is what it is. We're a little disgusted with it trying to figure it out. We still got we still got it where it cranks then runs like junk. I'm going to show y'all that right quick. Hang on to that. Just kind of, I'm going to pop it up. Let it do its thing and 
Ouais. So this first cylinder here, number two, it is, is dead on arrival. This one next to it, number four, it will fire initially and then cut out and then it'll start to miss pretty hard firing on six cylinders. So, so we're not sure what's causing that intermittent firing issue. And the only things we've gotten done today is replace the damaged uh, frayed wire on the IPR pigtail. We still run in the old IPR and um, we changed the, the crank position sensor. So it's, a, it's better, it's not, it's not cackling and stumbling as hard, but still doing the same thing. So we're either thinking of sticking IPR or maybe a busted O-ring. You can see right here the uh the damage and like i said i thought i saw something over here but maybe it just was dirty and the boot was missing so anyway we're gonna swap the ipr and just so y'all can see um look get a shot in there if you can so you, if you have a deep socket, you need a half inch deep. It can be eight or tw uh, six or 12. What I did is you gotta find one that will fit all the way over the stem. So for those of you <laughs> who haven't been introduced to this fabulous device, this is the IPR, this is the 10 nut spacer. This is the coil. These can go bad and sometimes you can get away with just changing these. So if you do change a complete IPR, save the coil, if for nothing else but a test. But as you can see, the stem is gonna go all the way back into the square where your ratchet is gonna go. So some of the, if you have a big enough neck inside the socket, then sometimes you can barely have the ratchet stick in the hole instead of sticking the square all the way in. What I did on this is I just cut a bolt and welded it up. That way I got plenty of grip and I think it's a three quarter and I'll use a ratchet wrench. And the way I do it is you take all of this off and I'll have a magnet stuck to the socket so I can snake it down, slide it on here pop my magnet off and then I can put my ratchet wrench on there and crack it off. Now you're gonna lose a little oil in the valley, so either put some rags or be, able, be ready to clean, clean that up. But that's basically swapping the IPR, but this is an inch and an eighth, is that right? Yeah, inch and an eighth socket. So, I mean, don't ruin one of yours, go to the pawn shop if you want to, but you gotta find one. Most of them will sit like this and you, they're just a little too shallow so if you want to make this tool and they, they do ford has a tool for this but i just went and found a socket that worked and made my own welded that on that way i can keep a three-quarter wrench and this and an ipr in the glove box change it on the side of the road so we're going to get into that and see where that leads us and then possibly get into pulling injectors We had the battery done went out, so we had to we had to replace him. So I'm gonna show you what he's doing with this one. You got this horse collar that's loose. This is the top. So you undo the bottom bolt, push it in and lift it up. Push it in and lift it up, and he's getting the pry bar under here. And that aluminum chute bolts into that hole, so it will crush. So you get a good little bite when you make sure that you're not in a bind on anything and you're not gonna mess nothing up you just give it a little oomph and she'll usually come out the hole sometimes you got to give her a little oomph oomph but oh, watch out bolty use the uh pry bar no the uh the long one over here oh this will work well okay uh -huh. 
And again, guys, the reason we're going underneath the valve cover is because we don't want to pry on it. There she is. And there she it's is. It's a boy. It's a boy. Let me go circumcise. YouTube circumcised. Yeah, there you go. There's a, there's a video that nobody wants to go viral. Flagged, red flag, shot down, erased. Yeah. No node. Cut off. Well, I don't see anything wrong with this. Damn. I'm going to show you all these. Now, these are not Fords because Ford O rings will have the flat one, and the big O ring is going to be black, and then we're going to have an orange and a pink. But I wanted to show y'all this. I hadn't seen this before. See if the camera will catch it. You know, see right, right there at the top. There's a little, a little ch chut that's sticking up to go in the gap of the metal split washer. We actually, when we first saw that, we thought that was a an imperfection in an oil leak, but. All right, let me pull these, uh, I'm gonna wipe this down and we're gonna pull these rings. Now, I don't go back in with rings, so if you, without changing the rings, it's just, you're there, it's too much crap to um, not do it. So if you're gonna go into injectors, just have yourself um, a spare set of rings. They're like 10 bucks, you know. Now, if you just pulled a set out, like if you redid them last week and you're checking because you think you have a leak, um, you know, then you, you, you know they're new. You can go ahead and do them. But um, on something like this where you pull an old O-rings, when they come out, just leave them out. If they weren't the cause of today's problem, they'll probably be the cause of tomorrow, so just soon leave them out. And so y'all can see, all right, so let me make sure this is in frame. I get questions on this all the time. So this little section from this O-ring here to the tip. This is the nozzle. You got a little brass crush ring right here. Always remember to check and make sure they're on the nozzle. If they're not, they're down in the cup. And you're going to have to go get them. You don't want a double o ring, double brass uh, crush washer or anything because that'll leak. This section sits in the, from the hook to the O-ring sits in the cup. This nozzle with the carbon on it sticks out in the bottom. From this O-ring to this O-ring is the fuel galley. So this section with the holes in here is full of diesel fuel. And then this O-ring to these O-rings is your oil galley. So you've got three galleys, oil, diesel, and fuel. The oil gets used and discharged out the chute. The fuel fills up and goes out the nozzle. And then this pointy section sits in the, um, uh, what does it sit in? It sits in the um, uh, in the injector cup, and the injector cup is surrounded by coolant, so the coolant will keep that injector cool because you're getting spray out of the tips of these nozzles at like 30,000 pounds, so uh, it generates a lot of heat, plus it's right there, you know, by the head and all that, so. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get these o-rings off so we can inspect them but i'm not seeing anything so yeah so don't reuse anything they got the little metal washer up here and the metal crush washer just get rid of them and put new i'm gonna take these off i mean they're old and they're stiff 
and you know kind of brittle but they're not um, I'm not seeing broken or cuts uh, of any significance so we're not sure why and where our oil is going Yep, this all looks exactly the same. <sighs> Man, we are throwing every idea we can at this thing and coming back with zeros. Alright, let me let us work on this a little further. We'll come back to y'all. Well, we'll be back at it again. So as y'all just saw, we um we reo ringing and re-crush washering uh, two and four and we got them labeled you might be able to see the numbers on the top but we're swapping them out reason we're swapping them out is because uh, out of all this diagnostic stuff two is never spit all out of the spout so we don't know why but uh, Tristan's doing that and what you can also do the sides of that horse collar are 5 8 inch you can take a 5 8 stubby and put it on the horse collar. You hook the upper one to the bolt and always double check before you go in with the injectors that the upper one is torqued to 10 foot pounds. And you put your horse collar on uh, the 5 eighths on the horse collar and push down. And then you, if you need to, you can do a little tippity tap and that'll seat it. But you seat the horse collar on the upper bolt and then pry down on the lower section with the 5 eighths wrench and that'll make it all seat in there good so we're going to hook this up and put the glow plug we're going to burp it we'll come back and show you all that since we're in the middle of doing it but we also you know we have other injector cup videos and pulling injectors and stuff have all this in it but we're going to run this down torque it to 10 foot pounds uh, or 120 inch pounds is the same thing and uh, then we're going to do a test run after we burp it so we'll come back to y'all when we're ready to burp. All right, kiddos, we got a squirt bottle and we're putting all in the ICP hole because earlier today, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but while we were testing this side out, we put air to it and um, ended up now you know, we, needed, we need to refill that galley. The reservoir is full. And if we leave this galley empty, as soon as we start cranking on it, all the res oil is gonna go into the galley and the res won't be full and we'll have to refill it. So we're gonna top off the res, I mean the, the oil galley, and then put the valve cover on. We'll probably leave the 42 pin plug right there in the middle of the screen off. Cause we're just gonna set the valve covers on, burp it, so we don't make any more of a mess than we've already done. And then take the valve cover right back off and put our glow plugs in and button our harness up and give her a test fire. All right, guys, we got the ICP back in. The oil galley is all folded up. Tristan's messing with me about using high-tech mechanic lingo like the res for the reservoir. <laughs> It's getting too late in the day, y'all, and this thing has been a total pain in the ass. So, all right, we got the valve cover just sitting on there. 42 pin right there is disconnected. I usually would use my thumb button, but there's so many additional wirings and whatnots on here. Uh, I'm just going to bump it with the key. Uh, let me see something. Action. Look here, zoom in on there. Guys, you got this plug right here and its counterpart. This has a little peg in it and you can tap that on your battery positive. I don't, there's a little stud in here and I don't want to burn it out. So I put an alligator clamp and this. And the reason I'm doing that is this will spin the motor over but you don't have the key on so you're not gonna accidentally start it up which is sometimes happen with the key. So we got the valve cover on with two bolts, finger tight so the compression doesn't blow the, cap, the cover off. And if you're really worried about it and you took out all your injectors and let them drain for a long time, you may want to go underneath 
with a ratchet and bar it over. If not, it, you know, we only did two cylinders and I don't think we got a whole lot in there because there wasn't a lot in the galley, but process is like this. You're just gonna bump it. You wanna wash the fan belt and make sure it nothing sounds like it's locking up because what we're trying to do is not hydrolock. And then once you get, once you bump it a couple of times, we already did this off camera. Once you bumped it a few individual times, then you can spin it. And go show them the little. You want to make sure your key's off and it's not in gear. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why I'm doing it here. See the little uh, J hose for the doghouse? Uh huh. So that that's just burping it, and we got a. That's gonna be about it. So we're gonna rig this down and. We're gonna pull the valve cover off and put the glow plugs in and rig for running. Now that's submarine lingo. <laughs> you didn't know me about res, but now I'm gonna use submarine lingo on you. Oh, I didn't pick it up. This piece of junk, we ought to rig it for them red lights in the cab. All right, go ahead and uh, shut that down and we're gonna rig this up and we'll come back to you when we're ready to pop off and see what she would do when she's in. I wanted to set that as a ringtone for <laughs> Oh, come on. All right, shoot your thing. I'm we live. Oh, we live. All right, guys. Okay. All right, guys. So we went back ahead. <laughs> what, what, is that that Puerto Rican? No. Look at turkey. Look. <laughs> look he's over there. Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if there's a turkey in this yard, both going to fucking find him. There. <laughs> He'll be oh, treeing him. All right. All right, guys. So we went ahead back with the injectors. Uh, we swapped them around. I don't like how they came out. Action! Alright guys, so we went ahead back with the same injectors, re o ringed them. Uh, we went ahead and swapped holes and the problem has in fact followed. So now number four is missing uh, off the bat and number two right here is missing intermittently. So we're gonna just verify that with a buzz test and we should see the problem followed a number four cylinder this time. Yeah. Okay, here we go with the buzz. Yeah. 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 Yeah, eight sounding healthy. Yeah. So we're looking pretty good, guys. We're gonna go ahead and swap these two injectors out and update y'all with further info. I'll look around the base of those things too, make sure we didn't uh, All right, all right, guys. So we're right. gonna go ahead with the first start. all right guys we're gonna shoot from this side for shits and giggles but uh we buttoning it up i say mr t is buttoning it up and uh again all we we changed the usual suspects to get it y'all heard it run and saw all of the codes and da 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 and then the last time we ran it it really threw some codes but when we test ran it after swapping those two injectors with some known good used ones um she perked up so i don't know what's going on i think we're still going to have some wiring issues to get into but uh, we'll show you all it running again here in a minute as soon as we get it all buttoned up well guys this adventure started with a blown fuse and it with two new injectors so <laughs> never know where it'll come 
But the whole time we was looking looking good on the numbers on the scanner. And it was misfiring on two cylinders. I thought I'd shoot a little final video for you guys. This is uh, really nobody's fault but both of ours. Uh, <laughs> And uh, rushing to try and get this truck back on the job, we ended up breaking our golden rule. Fast is slow and slow is fast. So we got in a hurry and forgot we had unbuttoned the IDM. And y'all saw us change the IDM and then put it back to the original one as we were testing it. But um, customer called and said, man, we got a, a piece of fender hanging and got a flashlight stuck up in there. So... <laughs> wondering where my flashlight went. yeah we got a little bit ahead of the game so anyhow guys back to like i said back to this one we ended up swapping the last two injectors uh to some should be goods and uh that's what did it so i guess our assumption of <coughs> whether the injectors are the symptom or the injectors are the source uh injectors ended up being the source so those two bad injectors were swapped out and she's been running good so anyhow that's gonna be it for now hope you guys got something out of it i know we shot this one kind of crazy and not as uh, hands-on but we were scratching our heads and trying to uh you know get information for y'all before we talk to you so it may have come out a little weird we'll see how i can pull it off when i get to editing it but that's how they go sometimes. Hopefully y'all got something out of it. And if not, at least some entertainment of watching us bang our heads against it. I brought it to the customer and told him I have no idea what we did, but it's running. <laughs> so anyway, shoot us a comment, man. If y'all see anything that we did wrong or any tips or suggestions on something, hit us up in the comments. Other than that, we'll see y'all when we mess up the next one. <laughs>